Hi everyone. I feel my wedding photography really changed when I sold my stupidly big 70 to 200 mm lens and also the 24 to 70 and began to use just two primes. A few months back, I took a look at the Nikon 85mm f1.4 G lens. I described how I felt it had improved my wedding photography and also how much I loved its look, especially for portraits. So today I'm going to look at its partner at my weddings, the Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens. Most of my reviews feature pictures from all sorts of different places, travel, concerts, street photography, and my day-to-day -day life. But I think it says a lot about this lens that all of these pictures are from weddings. Well, I think there are one or two from an engagement shoot, but that's not a million miles away. Paired with my Nikon D750, it's not a particularly small setup. It's perfect for wedding days, but it doesn't get to see the rest of my life. For that, I tend to use my smaller Fuji cameras. I'm not going to say too much about the image quality, but instead hopefully let lots of these real-life pictures speak for themselves. However, as I've chosen to use this lens at nearly every wedding I've photographed for the past four years, it should go without saying that I'm pretty happy with both the look and how it is to use. Using just my two primes, I began to see the world in those focal lengths and make pictures that have had a more consistent look throughout a wedding. I have a friend who's a fantastic wedding photographer and she uses only her 35mm lens for the entire day. I can't tell you how much that simple fact has inspired me, however it hasn't inspired me quite enough to leave my 85 at home just yet, but it gives me the confidence to know that you really can do it all with the 35. I do feel particularly at home with this field of view, as it's the same as my much-loved Fuji X100F and close to my current favourite film point-and-shoot, the Contax T2. This focal length has its advantages and disadvantages, and as is so often the case, those are two sides of the same coin. The medium-wide lens forces you to get closer to your subject if you want them to fill the frame. That can give quite an intimate feel to the pictures. I guess the corresponding downside is that you do have to actually get close. Thinking of weddings in particular, this may not be possible or appropriate during the wedding ceremony especially. As a side note, I have spoken to wedding videographers who despair at photographers shooting only with the 35, as they're often close up to the couple and in the videographer's shot. As someone who is making more films at weddings, I think that's a pretty fair observation. A photographer and a filmmaker, both using 35 at the same time, might cause them to get into each other's way, but if they're both using 85, then that can work just great. I know that's an observation about quite a specific scenario, but if weddings are your thing, then it's definitely worth considering. Next, I think it would be wrong of me to say that my experience of the lens has been entirely trouble-free over the past four years. I think it was about two or three years ago that I found that I was suddenly getting out of focus shots. I was shooting wide open and the focus was just a little but very noticeable amount off. At first I thought I was being careless in my shooting style, but after a few test shots with stationary inanimate subjects, I could quickly tell it wasn't me that was the problem. It was a bit worrying at first, but I bought a cardboard lens calibration chart and calibrated the lens in my camera. It was a bit of a pain in the neck to be honest, but I haven't had any trouble since, and I hadn't even thought about it for years until writing this, so it's not typical of my experience with the lens. I've since heard that calibrating your lenses is something you should occasionally take the time to do with DSLRs, so maybe that's a good lesson learned. Overall, I can recommend this lens completely, and I've really enjoyed putting this collection of pictures together. It's been nice to look back on some of my favourite shots. Thanks everyone for watching. Please subscribe for more little photography reviews and adventures, if you haven't already. See you soon in the next one. Thanks again.